Hi everyone, it's Jerry. On May 8th, 2014, an interesting chess event took place in a shopping center in Oslo, Norway. In short, it involved our current world champion Magnus Carlsen, three grandmasters, the Houdini chess engine, and some guy in a red morph suit whose identity was not revealed until after the game. It sounds pretty wild, but this actually did take place, and here's how it worked. The three grandmasters, Simon Agdestein, Leif Erland Johansson and John Ludwig Hammer would make suggestions for Team Norway for the white side and from those suggestions people online interacting at the time would vote for which of those moves was to be played. Whatever was voted for the most would be the move played. When it was white's turn to move white had five minutes when it was black's turn when it was Carlson's turn he only had one minute. On top of this I mean we've seen the vote style chess game before, but on top of this there was an additional rule. That rule stated that each of the three grandmasters could consult with the Houdini chess engine at three points during the game. So potentially nine moves could have been the top recommendation of Houdini throughout this game. Lastly, the guy in the red morph suit, well his identity was re later revealed as uh, cross-country skiing legend Advar bra and he simply acted as the relayer for this game it's a very interesting game interesting event i imagine um i can't imagine uh <laughs> i'm just kind of curious to uh know what your thoughts are on uh, or what you would think if you were actually shopping in the mall and you saw this taking place so feel free to share your comments in the section below but we see in this particular game uh, an open sicilian knight c6 f3 e5 knight b3 this is the correct uh, retreat here capturing simply builds the black center and remedies the d5 square but we have knight b3 this is a hole now on d5 cannot be defended by any of the black pawns this is quickly uh, going to turn out to not be a hole we'll end up having a structural change in this game after bishop e7 in comes knight d5 knight takes pawn takes and there we go this is no longer a hole on d5 d6 is no longer a concern sometimes it could be a concern um, if this pawn is still back here but this bishop sometimes acts as a very very good defender of that pawn but after its capture after we have this capture we have now this structural change a four to three majority in favor of black and a four to three majority in favor of white on the queen side knight b8 bishop d3 black castles and now after bishop e3 knight d7 just getting back into play these majorities the four to three majorities on the king side and queen side will be set into motion here comes f5 and here comes c4 so both sides get rolling with their majorities eventually white is looking for c5 maybe with the correct support and this pawn could be passed black on the other hand well still keeping options open of course there's maybe f4 a timely f4 or an e4 move but keeping them sitting is often best maintaining its flexibility here comes a5 these knights while well, the knight on b3 or any of these other highlighted squares are often kicked and inconvenienced by rook pawn advances so we see a5 as functioning in that sense looking for a4 and also you could view it as eventually securing a knight post once on c5 in this game the dark square bishops are exchanged and you could imagine a knight on c5 is very very strong so knight d2 simply looking to reposition and now bishop to g5 welcoming a dark square bishop exchange why not white has a slight space advantage due to the pawn on d5 and this is the better white bishop on e3 so he is exchanged maybe better would be to simply drop him back maintain the dark square bishop maintain some control over the dark squares uh, maybe you could actually give the bishop up for the knight that might still be risky but uh, this was an alternative to keep the bishop around at least on the f2 square uh, you'll notice that this move here bishop to g5 the first instance where it could have been played was right here after knight b8 and bishop d3 this is the first instance where it could have been played but you'll note that black at least at the very least waits for this bishop to expend a move before going forward with the dark square bishop exchange just bear that in mind it's important or uh, 
it's it's a good idea to make sure that if you are going to go for this particular move, bishop g5, wait at least for white to expend a move moving this bishop. So once we get to this point here, again, these pawns are set into motion, white and black. a5, knight d2, bishop g5. The queen is now very active, potential checking square on e3. Opposite the king, this pawn is in a pin. Don't know if it's really going to turn out to be an issue, but just some things to maybe be saying to yourself when you see this queen's position on g5. We have now queen e2. White is now fully developed, watching over e3 as well. Knight c5, the bishop backs up. And finally, black is fully developed. With bishop d7, the rooks are connected. The bishop is also there to support b5, which is what we see on black's next move. b3, and now b5. b3, I think, was played to try and get this sort of advance in to eventually kick the knight, but it's coming at a snail's pace. There's uh, much more direct action by black after b3. b5 is playable right here because if white goes for this capture, black is there to recapture with the bishop. Seems like you can't do that, but at the end of it, black is of course getting that minor piece back and now has a very active queen checking possibilities on the bishop, on the pawn, and maybe there's even an idea of playing a more positional approach, maybe not going pawn hunting at some point, and playing queen to b4. If she is ever taken, this pawn is there to recapture, the rook is very active, these pawns are immobile, and this knight would be super secure on the c5 square. We do not have that. Instead of pawn takes, we have f4, which is interfering with this mentioned uh, variation of the queen sweeping down to grab on d2. Since after e takes f, pawn takes pawn, the bishop should not take. The queen is of course now not there to grab the knight, the pawn is in the way. So we only go as far as c takes b and now black of course does not take but instead gets their last piece involved with tempo on the queen. Very active rook and a very appealing square on e3. This pawn is doubled you have double black pawns here, but notice what notice what one of these doubled pawns does. It provides a nice pivot square on e3. So we could see a rook there, and then finally doubling on the e-file. In this game, the rook does not pivot on e3, but rather the queen, as we will soon see. Queen c4, the queen comes back to e7. She's looking to give check, and the knight is not long off from eyeing the f2 square. This actually comes about soon enough. Knight f3, queen to e3 check, king h1, knight e4. This is a very strong uh, move we have coming up, looking to win the exchange, and that does happen in this one. This knight pretty much cannot be captured. The move played was bishop d3. If you are grabbing the knight, you are undoubling the pawns. This knight is hit, and this is going to turn out to be not so good for white. These pawns are ready to just break down the white position, the white king position. So we don't have bishop takes knight here, but rather bishop d3, giving up the exchange essentially. Since after knight f2, this knight is intolerable, he must be taken as otherwise we have the familiar smothered mate with double check, followed by check and then mate. So he's intolerable, he needs to go after knight f2, rook takes, queen takes, queen to c7, hitting at two weak points, two unprotected pieces. The bishop is defended. Queen takes pawn, and now black is doubling on the e-file. Flight square in here for white. And as Carlson pointed out after the game, he was, uh, when he sensed that they were maybe using the Houdini engine, he decided to pull the emergency brake, as he, well, as he later said, he called it per pulling the emergency brake and bailed out at this point going straight for a draw. Forced continuation on this move 28 with rook e1. Knight takes, rook takes, queen takes, and now we end up with a perpetual check, but it doesn't get to that point. We only go as far as queen to e3, and it is at this point that a draw was agreed upon. There's nothing that white could do to avoid it. Playing here is simply bad, since you pick up the bishop with check, and what more would there really be to do? Um, after queen to e3 going here, it's just you come back, you go to h1, you could go to e1, and then 
come back to this G3 square. Basically looking at any of these three highlighted squares to give check. Um, that's all black would need to do at that point. But as it stood in this one after queen to e3, again, a draw was agreed, and uh, that's pretty much it. So as always, I hope you got something out of this video. Take care. Bye.